programs dealing with religion, finance, health, business opportunities, including international multicultural talk and music. The following is an independently produced program. The views and claims dictated by the host and guests of the program are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or its advertisers. For sponsorship, music promotion, and business ads, call management at 347-699-6892. When it comes to help in spiritual matters beyond the norm, no one comes close to the international, world-renowned spiritual healer and advisor, Sister Ruan. Are you suffering? Do you have bad luck? Do you feel you need some help? Well, there is help now. Don't give up. I am Sister Ruan, a spiritual reading advisor for many, many years, and I really want to get the job done. If you're having problems with your loved one, maybe you're having problems with money, maybe you're having court cases, well, I'm the one you need to call. You're sitting there thinking, where should I go? Or maybe you're going somewhere and not getting spiritual help. You call me now, Sister Obama, and I can help you. Call me, 718-253-7273. Yes, you heard it. Get on that phone now and call now, 718 718- Two five three seven two seven three. I've been working more than forty years and getting results. Now it's your time. Try me out. Don't listen to what others say. Try me now, and you won't be disappointed. Call now. One free question. My phone. I'm Attorney Kurt Robertson. I'm a personal injury lawyer here in New York. And if you've been injured in an accident, you should call me. I'll get you the money you deserve. Just dial 929-438-5878. That's 929-GET-KURT. 929-G-E-T-K-U-R-T. That's 929-438-5878. It's easy. Got hurt? Call Kurt, and I'll get you the money you deserve. Welcome to BrooklynStation.com, using the latest digital technology to bring you a cutting-edge mix of features and the best music. Great radio means a great place to advertise your business to a potential world audience. To find out how to connect your business with our listeners, get in touch with BrooklynStation.com. You're listening to BrooklynStation.com. Welcome to the Tap Hour. Tap Hour is on King and, is brought to you by KingandQueenRadio.com and on BrooklynStation.com. And you can find it on the website every single Thursday at 4.30 p.m. Um, well, uh, the Tap Hour is brought to you also by um, The Evil Project. And The Evil Project discusses the cycle of illness, mental health, and addiction. So today we're gonna, uh, we have a dedication to the Amy Winehouse, uh, who was born uh, September 1983 and passed away on July 2011. Um, Amy Winehouse, she was definitely uh, part, a member of the cycle. Uh, she was 27 when she passed away and uh, she was definitely, definitely um, a member of the cycle, but she also uh, was dedicated to us because she, her music, touched a lot of people in many ways. Uh, she was passionate in her music and she won She won Grammy Awards, she won Record of the Year and Song of the Year, um, especially that song Rehab, which we're going to play for you in just a bit. Um, she was plagued by drug and alcohol addiction and she died of alcohol poisoning. So uh, we're gonna play Rehab by Amy Winehouse for you right now. Yeah. 
why we just heard rehab from Amy Winehouse. Uh, so that was from her Back to Black album that uh, for some time uh, was UK's best-selling album of the 21st century. Um, so uh, according to the Times um, uh, article, well, UK's Times article, uh, Amy Winehouse um, suffered from mental illness and how it was, and they expressed how it was crippling her. Now, uh, this is uh, most indefinitely something that was discussed not just in articles but across the nation, how she was suffering from mental illness, addiction, and combination of the two. And um, she had an underlying reason for a lot of different things throughout her erratic career. Um, she expressed in many interviews how she didn't want to be the center of attention and how she just had the love for music. Uh, there was other things that were uh, expressed um, for example, a new uh, creation tr treatment. This was actually in 2018, expressing how um, dual diagnosis could have actually helped her uh, during her trying errors throughout throughout her career. But then again, while she was also, you know, expressing herself throughout her career, she she helped a lot of people as well throughout throughout her music. Excuse me, by expressing herself through her music. According to Todd Brand, Todd Bryson .com, um, there were six creative lessons. For example, like in 1992, Amy begins to blossom on stage. In 2003, Amy releases her first record, Frank. And in 2006, uh, her music scene album, Back to Black, simultaneously sinking deeper and deeper into addiction, she also expresses herself even further into creativity. And in 2008, she wins five Grammy Awards. And by 2011, she steps out out of her uh, reclusive nature to record with Tony Bennett. Now, these creative lessons, I mean, there's creative lessons, but then there's health. And then there are some artists who can balance, but then there are some artists who dive deeper into their creativity and become crippled by it. So, I mean, all of these articles will be available on my blog. Um, I'm going to be posting them on my website. It's www. Oh, sorry, um, theableproj.org. Um, I will definitely be posting these details, um, but um, we can dive in deeper um, into uh, the aspects of um, Amy Winehouse. Um, everybody analyzes it a little further, but um, creativity and health, but. Um, we're going to take a quick little break and we're going to come back to uh, Macklemore when we come back. Greetings. I am Sister Yubani, the one and all. I am the spiritual doctor, the most famous, gifted to help in all problems of life. Specializing, reunite lovers, friends, soulmates. I work with the spirits of the dead and the living. I give you those lucky numbers you've been waiting for. I have something that will give you a spirit that will help you conquer things that you want to conquer. I have those stones, those magic stones, those lucky stones that you've been looking for. And also, guess what? I have something can do house clearance. You having troubles in your house? That's right, you need to get something to give your house a house clearance. Don't worry no more if you have an immigration problem because I help many of people solve cases every day. That's immigration problems, also court cases. Don't be disappointed but for the loved one that behind bars because I work with the spirit can help them and release them from prison. That's right, you're having problems getting the job. I remove the evil from your life so you can get a job and be able to have money and be able to do some of the things that you would love to do in life. I foresee the future events. I also helped and helped a lot of celebrities. I can clear impossible problems. 
some of those problems are depression, substance abuse, impotence, infertility. And I break all black magic spell jeeps and demonic forces. You want to have success in business? One call will convince you. One call will convince you. 718 253 7273 718 253 7273 718 253 7273 One call will convince you. Good evening. <laughs> All right, everyone, welcome back to the Tap Hour. So um, we're, we were just going over uh, Amy Winehouse. Um, that's what our dedication was today. But we're, um, we were discussing her addictions and her issues, not only with um, alcohol, but with drugs as well. And that leads us to uh, more artists that have been affected by the cycle of illness, mental health, and addiction. But uh, we're going to lead into Macklemore. Uh, Macklemore is a rapper who um, is known by his stage name, Macklemore, but his real name is Benjamin Hammond Haggerty. Uh, he was born in, uh, June, on June 19, 1983, and he's an American rapper and songwriter from Seattle, Washington, and right now we're going to hear his uh, song, Drug Dealer. to brooklynstation.com Best friend, what the thing that's killing me, enemies, but my best friend is not healing me. Read the 
All right, you're back on with the tap hour. Brought to you by KingQueenRadio.com or BrooklynStation.com. We just heard Macklemore's drug dealer, and that was such a. I I have too many. Oh man, I love that song because the thing is that I mean Macklemore uh, is part of a new movement. Uh, in February 2016, rapper Macklemore released the Unruly Mess I've Made, a record in which addiction is a recurring topic, according to DrugRehab.com. And um, uh, he, uh, a few months later, he met with the president, Barack Obama, at the White House to discuss the realities of the disease. And the thing is that he's part of this huge movement to start shifting and changing the way we all look at addiction. And um, even Kendrick Lamar was um, commenting, saying that you have certain artists portraying these trends and don't really have that type of lifestyle. And then it gives off the wrong thing. And um, I just also want to comment because he mentioned uh, Big Pharma in the lyric. And I just have to comment on recent news. In October 18th, which was just a couple of days ago, Big Pharma had a gi uh, Big Pharma's giant promotional payouts to doctors. You can even look this up in the news. More than 700 doctors were paid at least $1 million by drug and medical device companies between 2014 and 2018. ProPublica reports more than 2,500 received at least half a million dollars. All right, so the thing is that you have to understand why this matters. Like, th this is according to AXIOS.com, and probably more uh, news related articles will probably be on this topic. The reason why this matters is because many drugs are promoted. And so you think that you're going to your doctor and you're receiving just a basic medication or you're receiving anything, but then again, if you're a member of the cycle like I am, for example, suffering with an illness, suffering with a medical issue or a mental health issue, or even if you're suffering with any type of an additive or addiction, you're receiving something that's supposed to suppress any type of these symptoms, and all of a sudden, you're getting a drug that's pushed onto you because it's being promoted by your doctor because they're paying. They're being paid by Big Pharma to promote these drugs. And I mentioned during uh, my TAP Live, which is hosted on Tuesdays at 4.30, that when these drugs are promoted, and let's just say the doctors don't really know the side effects as much, but you're just a guinea pig, it's like, that's what happens. You're the guinea pig, and they're, these doctors are being paid to promote these drugs. I mean, between the lines, the Affordable Care Act required such payments to be pay, made public for this reason, so you know that you have to educate yourself on these on these medications. Always read the pamphlet. Always know what's, what, what's happening with your drugs. Always know what medications you're receiving and the side effects. And if it's a new drug, know if it's worth it. But um, moving on. <laughs> Um, we're going to listen to um, uh, Future, the rapper. We're going to listen to uh, The World on Drugs. You're listening to BrooklynStation.com. Hi. Ah. 
fantastic. <laughs> oh, you're so silly. <laughs> She's fantastic. She's a manager. Now we have fun during the tap hour. Rappers, uh, World on Drugs. All right, so um, when it comes to Future the Rapper, um, he was born on November 20th, 1983, and uh, he's an American rapper, singer, songwriter, uh, record and pr record producer. Uh, he was born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, he first became involved in music as part of Dungeon Family Collective, according to Wikipedia, but um, according to... Um, HipHopDX.com, he reveals why he always raps about drugs in his music. It's actually really interesting. I mean, when I first read it, it I, I found it really, really cool. According to a 2016 article, he states that it's because it's what the public wants. It's very, very interesting. And I learned this, and I actually found it to be very, very interesting because, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, a lot of people judge these rappers for you know, talk, you know, constantly rapping about sex, drugs, alcohol. But then again, he says that he's always depicted as this person who's always a drug addict. But then again, I mean, all he says is, is like, I'm not always high. He's like, I'm making deals left and right. He says, I'm always getting this money because I'm giving the people what they want. He said, I'm not a drug addict. I'm just giving people what they want. He's like, they're the ones that want to hear this. And I would assume it's the same for any rapper. I mean, and that's the reason why I, I'm, the reason why I'm bringing this to everyone's attention is because it shows what we as a society have become. It's not necessarily the artists or how a lot of these artists are being portrayed. It's the fact that we are shaping them that way, especially in a society right now. Keep in mind, we have the ability to shape things, especially in the online community, especially the fact that we have a say in so much. Keep in mind, we have so much power, especially with artists and this. We have so much power, and when we tell them what we want, this is what happens. They're talking about drugs. <laughs> I mean, it shows you that the cycle is not just affecting everybody, but it's shaping communities because this is what we're demanding. Oh, talk about this, talk about that. This is what we want, apparently. So it shows you that, I mean, if you think that you're alone, you're not. You're the one requesting this. This is what you want to hear. So I want everyone to keep that in mind, especially when future saying, hey, listen, I'm not on drugs. This is just what everybody wants to hear from me. <laughs> so uh, he also explains here, he says, I'm not like super drugged out or a drug addict. Uh, he can see my music may portray a certain kind of image. And I know it's some people th that might be super drugged out and they listen to my music like, hey, thank you. You speaking for me. <laughs> but um, it's a really good article. And as I said before, um, uh, the details will be posted on my blog, especially links um, to a lot of these posts. Um, these, uh, you could also find um, a lot of other details about uh, Future and uh, his, up, his upcoming albums. But um, we're going to take a quick little break and uh, we're going to come back and listen to another band uh, out to the UK. 
Um, coming from the UK, for some reason we have a lot of bands from the UK. <laughs> I think from the theme for um, for um, Amy Winehouse, I think because of her popularity. But um, when we come back, we're going to listen to uh, Daughter's Medicine, okay? Have a good, uh, we're going to take a break and we'll come right back. Are you on a rocky road right now? Do you feel lonely, depressed, and happy down on your luck? Do you want to change your life? Don't give up. Ladies and gentlemen, African reader and advisor, Sister Duba, is here to guarantee that in as little as 24 hours, just one day, you gain peace, love, health, and prosperity. Call 718-253-7273. That number again is 718-253-7273. Are you unhappy with your marriage or love life? Separated from your loved ones? Have problems with luck? Problems on the job? With immigration, examinations, or even court cases? Can't hold money? Or do you have a strange sickness? Call Sister Duval now. 718-253-7273. That was just a phone call away. African reader and advisor Sister Duval can help solve all problems of life. Do not confuse her with any other psychics or readers you have been to before. If she can help you, then no one else can. This woman of God does what others claim to do. Don't let time or distance keep you away. This God-gifted spiritualist brings you solutions to the mystery of the deep south. Sister Dubon is located in Brooklyn, New York. Call now and turn your life around. 718-253-7273 for one free question by phone. And don't give up. You're listening to BrooklynStation.com.
to you by King and Queen Radio.com and BrokenStation.com. So that was such a beautiful song by Daughter. Um, the song's name is Medicine. So Daughter is an indie folk band from England. Um, the uh, singer of the band is um, Elena Tonra, uh, and um, the drummer is Remy Aguilera, and um, the guitarist is Igor Hefele, and that song, Medicine, is so beautiful. Um, a lot of people have depicted the song in so many different ways. Um, I know I personally see it as, um, I see it in terms of substance abuse and uh, codependent relationship. It's, it's just such a beautiful song. And the tone of the, of the song, it's just, it's relaxing tone. And all of their music is very much like that. Uh, if you listen to Daughter's music, but, um, in regards to Elena Tonra, she uh, stated in an interview um, in November of 2018 when she tried to um, create her own independent album that she was suffering with alcoholism. Um, she, she was actually going on some type of rant, uh, according to the Independent in um, the UK, that um, she was trying to uh, become independent and she was struggling with relationships and um, there's a magnitude of anger on the record um, it, it was it was very frustrating for her and she was struggling a little bit especially with romance and things of the sort but um, she did mention that uh, she gets very attached to her work and she was expressing feelings of um, unhappiness and but um, when it comes to getting attached to your work that that was that does tie back to what we started with with uh, Amy Winehouse. How people are who are in the creative mindset do happen to get very attached to their work, and when it comes to that, you have different stages. And we did mention the creative stages with Amy Winehouse, and there are a bunch of stages. People who get developed in relationships or get developed into their creative mindset, and then they wind up getting into these rants. And that's, that brings me to our next artist, which um, is um, Dan Reynolds. Uh, he's part of Imagine Dragons. We're going to listen to um, Believer by Imagine Dragons, and we'll get a little into um, what happens with him. You're listening to BrooklynStation.com. Let it, 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 let it,
KingQueenRadio.com and BrooklynStation.com. So you can catch the, uh, you can catch me on uh, the Able Project with uh, theableproj.org, and you can also um, catch me on Instagram at hashtag theableproj. So we just heard Imagine Dragons, Believer, an awesome song, a powerful song, uh, and that was sang by um, the entire band. Lead vocalist Dan Reynolds. Uh, we're going to discuss um, Dan Reynolds. Uh, He's been going through a lot, especially recently. Uh, he's had uh, tremendous issues when it comes to mental health. He actually broke down. Um, he he broke down on stage recently, uh, July first, two thousand nineteen, just this past year. Um, he broke down into tears on on stage uh, for suicide victims, um, and it was just really, really. It was unbearable, especially for people who were there. I know I had friends who were actually there at the concert and expressing to me that it was just unbearable because he's suffering himself with depression. And it, it's he he said that um, he he said that he was already suffering with these problems. And then the lead vocalist um, spotted the face of George Lipson, a man who lost his lost his son to suicide. And Reynolds wears a ring on stage from the family. And he just started breaking down crying. I think it was his daughter who came up on stage and started to pat his back. And see, the thing is that when you're already a member of the cycle and you're suffering and then you see other people who are suffering, it's just you feel like you're helpless almost. Now, getting in further, in September, um, that's when he revealed that's when Dan uh, revealed that he was suffering. But I think prior to that, people already were able to tell. But um, he tweeted that um, that he was suffering from depression and that he had major depressive disorder, anxiety, ADHD. But the thing is that I think in this day and age, a lot of people have anxiety. But when you are a person who's not only a celebrity and you're, how do I say it, when you're in front of the masses, it's not that it's a different because you are a person, there's no doubt about that, but I guess the pressure mm -hmm. is mainly different. Mm -hmm. And I can't say it because I'm not one of, I'm not a celebrity, I can't say that, but I guess maybe because people feel differently and they, they've, and uh, the, I guess they feel like the, the pressure is on them, but a lot of celebrities are coming forward, letting people know that they have these issues. And I commend Dan Reynolds for, for letting everyone know, but the, the way that he tweeted it and the way that he's letting everyone know that he has major depressive disorder, anxiety, and the thing is that the way that he tweeted it, he continued by saying, I choose to stay alive every day, I have a therapist. It's like he's trying to stay strong and he's letting everyone know that he has strength. And it's, it's, it's amazing, it's a beautiful thing, the way that he's doing it. And you could tell through his songs, you could tell through through his actions that 
he's trying to stay strong and it's beautiful because it's it's pro it's giving everyone hope he's taking his he's taking his platform and he's doing it in a strong way and i actually commend people who do that uh, and that leads me to our next artist um well our next band it's matchbox 20 and we're going to listen to another oldie i always do this it's not an oldie but to me it's an oldie <laughs> but a goodie unwell by matchbox 20. All right, we just heard Matchbox 20, Matchbox 20 is unwell. Uh, so that's an American rock band. Um, I don't know if anybody uh, is familiar. I know I'm familiar with Matchbox 20. I know that uh, the uh, lead singer, Rob Thomas, he had a bad history with addiction. Uh, his mother suffered from addiction. Um, he definitely participates in the cycle. He's what I would call the outsider of the cycle, but then finally uh, participated himself when he hit the big time. He also mentioned that he did not want his son to see his mugshot <laughs> because he, um, ch he, he wanted to change his life. 
Um, he, according to a 2013 article by Rolling Stone, he mentioned that he changed his life around. Um, he didn't want to participate in any further addictions. Uh, so he just switched his life around and he used music as a tool uh, to uh, switch everything around after many years. It took him quite a bit, but he also used music to try to help others in the meantime. So that's a great example of um, people trying to change others' lives. Um, what I want to do is I want to definitely uh, to switch it over to um, James Arthur uh, because James Arthur is uh, definitely a great example of somebody who's uh, switching their lives around after many years of strife with uh, a great song he, after many years of uh, addiction and alcoholism, he uh, definitely switched his life around um, from 2013 of winning um, he won the X Factor, James Arthur's Finally Feeling Good. Oh, Finally Feel Good, sorry. You're listening to BrooklynStation.com. Anything 
finally feel good. So we're closing in on time. That um, This is ta the tap hour brought to you by King King Radio.com and BrooklynStation.com. All right, so just a little background on James Arthur. Um, he had a history of addiction and uh, he suffered since 2013. But uh, if you want some more information, you can definitely follow through on uh, theableproj.org. Um, I'm going to have a blog set up and everything, but um, definitely come back and uh, watch and tune in uh, next Thursday at 4.30 p.m. Uh, you can also follow through on our Instagram and then hashtag theableproj. All right, so uh, we look forward to uh, coming through. We look forward to hearing back from you or just hearing from you at all. Uh, tune into the website and uh, come back next week. All right, guys.